Hi everyone, this is Dominic Michel with JDM Financial Consulting. Uh, we are a tax um, consulting firm as well as we do bookkeeping. Um, our mission is to be our client's most dedicated, reliable and effective tax consulting firm by assisting our clients rely, uh, uh, to realize and exceed their compliance objective. We become the most prolific consulting firm. So today I decided to start doing some videos to um, to educate our clients. Uh, hopefully if you are not our client currently you may decide in the future if you need our help you may um, uh, search for us and give us a call. Um, our presentation today is for is about nonprofit organizations um, specifically nonprofit organizations that have to file form 990, 990EZ and 990 or 990N. So, uh, however, today we will specifically focus on form 990. So basically to start without any further ado, um, basically uh, most nonprofit tax exempt organizations are asking if they are required to file uh, annual tax return with the IRS. So the answer to that is if you are tax exempt nonprofit organization holding active uh, exempt, exemption status, you do not have to, fa to pay federal taxes. That is the basic meaning of being tax exempt or holding a 501c3 or so. So however, in order to keep your exemption status, you have to file an annual informational return with the IRS. Of course, there are some exem uh, exemption to that. Um, also, in order to keep, basically to keep your your exemption status, you have to file um, informational return annually. This annual reporting return must be filed on either form 990, 990EZ, or 990N. So nonprofit organization with annual gross receipt of $50,000 or more must file its informational tax exempt return on either Form 990, which is a return of organization exempt from income tax or 990-EASY, short uh, form return of organization exempt from income tax or basically just 990-N. Okay. Um, what differentiates these for, um, 990 forms basically um, is, uh, like we explained to you already, nonprofit organization with annual gross receipt of $50,000 or more must file its um, informational tax exempt return on either form 990 return of organization exempt from income tax or 990 easy short form returns of organization exempt from income tax so basically uh, most uh, tax exempt entities are required to file these forms uh, and uh, which are annual return whether it is a calendar or fiscal year what is a calendar year calendar year is a uh, year ending December 31st. Basically, your year start January 1st and end on December 31st. Fiscal year could be any time during the year, whichever year selected by, by the organization. Um, most, most, uh, and most taxpayers like that are on cash basis accounting, they use, um, they are calendar year, like individual taxpayers, um, self-employed taxpayers or who file Schedule C, they are uh, calendar year taxpayer. But there are also some organizations, you know, um, some corporations that are also on a calendar year. Uh, fiscal year are uh, years, uh, tax years that ending other than December 31st. Could be any time during the year, but it's include 12 months. So fiscal fiscal year could could be a combination of uh, number of months from 
uh, for example, in uh, years 2017 and a number of months in 2018 because it fallen sometime during the year, it's not in December 31. So the form, uh, these organizations are required to file depends on their financial activities. For example, to take a look at the table, let's take a look at um, at this table. So basically exemption organization annual reporting requirement. So we give an overview, uh, overview of these annual return filing exceptions. Um, so basically annual reporting, these are the annual reporting requirement for nonprofit organizations. If your nonprofit organization grows to sit normally uh, less than or equal to um, $50,000, uh, which is a, 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 a note that organization is eligible to file the uh, postcard, uh, which is form 990N. So there are no actual uh, re no actual return or uh, paper return for the 990N. It has to be filed online. So, however, this organization may also choose to file a full return as opposed to 990 and there are no basic instruction for that basically just have to follow the instruction i'll cover that with you as we're going along and of course if your organizations if you if your organization's ghost receipt annual ghost receipt is um, less than two hundred thousand dollars and the total asset is less than five hundred thousand dollars for the year you have to file either Form 990 or 990 Easy. Uh, 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 instruction, you can find the instruction in Section 501C, um, uh, the 501C instruction, uh, Section 527 or Section 54947A1 uh, of the Internal Revenue Code, uh, but that does not cover uh, private foundation. Gross receipt greater than $200,000 or total asset greater than $500,000, you have to file Form 990. On the, that is also under Section 501, 501C, uh, Section 527, or 4947A1 of the Internal Revenue Code, except for private foundation. Private foundation, uh, regardless of financial status, have to file Form 990PF. Okay, so about filing Form 990, 990Z or 990N, uh, Form 990N um, uh, is an electronic uh, uh, notice e postcard for tax exempt organization, as we discussed before, that whose gross receipt for the uh, whose annual gross receipt is less than uh, fifty thousand um, dollars. Uh, they are not required to file Form 990 or Form 990-EZ, but they may choose to do so voluntarily. Um, okay, so so Form 90, uh, 990-N electronic filing system moved from Urban Institute website. It used to be in the Urban Institute website. Now it's moved to the IRS, uh, uh, IRS.gov in February 2016. All filers must register with the IRS.gov uh, prior to filing the next Form 990N. This is a one-time registration. You won't be asked uh, to register again when filing the uh, following year. So basically, if you, if you register this year, 2008, uh, 2019, you won't have to register again to, for 2020. You just have to rem remember your login credentials so that you can um, you have to remember and secure your, uh, put your login credentials in a safe place where you can remember them, create login credentials that you can remember so that you can easily ask, access, uh, access the web, the IRS website so you can file your Form uh, 990N. Form 990N must be completed uh, and filed electronically. There is no paper written as we discussed before. So, um, like the 990 or 990 EZ, they are specific form, just like you have a specific form for the 9, uh, 1040 or 1040 EZ, 1040A, or the 1120, which is for corporation, uh, S 1120 for um, um, a small business corporation or, or uh, 1065 for partnership and so forth. 
Um, you can use the Form 990 and electronic filing system postcard, uh, and there is a user guide for that while registering and filing. Most common uh, problems can be avoided by following the user guide. Okay, for filing system, for filing system and website issue, you can see how to file frequently asked question on the uh, on the IRS website. Uh, if the site issues are unresolved, call TE or T uh, G customer accounts uh, service at eight seven seven nine twenty nine. I'm sorry, 829-5500, our representative will file your form, will help you file your form 990 and information. Organizations should continue to uh, effort to file, uh, 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 to, should continue their best effort and do their due diligence to file uh, even if late. Even if you are late, you have to make sure that you, con you ensure that you file your information, your annual information return. Okay, so what organization, what type of organization must file, um, must file form 990N? Uh, now, there are some exceptions to this requirement, uh, which we just discussed. The, uh, these except, exception uh, to this requirement include organizations that are included in a group return. So if your organization is part of a group return that file or the forms, so you are you are exempt from file from these requirements. Like churches uh, are also exempt. The integrated ancillaries and conventions or associations of churches and organization required to file a different return, such as a private foundation that must file form 990 PF. So mo most small tax exempt organization whose annual gross receipt are normally. $50,000 or less can satisfy their annual reporting requirement by electronically submitting Form 990N if they choose not to file Form 990 or Form 990 easy instead. Right? So Form 990N filing due date. What are the filing due date? Form 990N is due every year by the by the 15th day of the fifth month. So for example, if your uh, if your um, if you're on a calendar year, which which your your uh, um, your 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 tax year will end on December 31st, so you will have to file by the fifth month, which would be. Um, uh, I be, which will be May uh, on by May fifteenth of uh, of the following year. For example, for two thousand uh, for year two thousand nineteen, your fiscal year, uh, your calendar year will end December thirty first. So you have to make sure that you file your annual um, informational return by May fifteenth, two thousand twenty. Twenty. So. So, uh, for example, if your tax year end, uh, oh, yes, like I explained, December thirty one. Um, the post you have to uh, file the e postcard, you have to log in, or if you don't have any registration yet, you have to register on the IRS website, uh, irs.gov, uh, and file the e postcard. Uh, like you have to do your due diligence. If you have any issue, you can call the number that we just mentioned before and then see if they can help you meet that obligation. Uh, if the due date falls on Saturday, Sunday, or a legal holiday, the, the next due date is uh, uh, your the due date will fall on the next business day. Um, if your if your 990N is late, the IRS will send a reminder notice to uh, the last address they have on file. So you have to make sure that your address with the IRS is uh, is current. If you have moved or have different uh, mailing address, if you have changed or modified your mailing address, you have to not notify the IRS so they can have the right mailing address so you don't miss important notices. Um, so while there is no penalty assessment for filing form 990 uh, and late, organization that failed. So this is very important. If you, even though there is no penalty, you are not assessed penalty for not filing form 990N uh, if, or, or filing, it, filing it late, or just like you would be imposed penalty for, fi for filing your 1040 late. Um, organization that failed to file uh, required form 990, 990 easy or 990N for three 
consecutive years will automatically lose their tax exempt status so this is a big thing this is a big uh, this is a very important piece of information because you remember what it takes you to get your uh, exemption status how much work you had to put together you had to spend money you had to find maybe an accountant or CPA to help you file your uh, form uh, to uh, your application for um, 501c3 exemptions uh, to get that status it was not it was not easy for you to get that status so you you should not be uh, you should not take it light to let uh, uh, to lose your exemption status so therefore if you fail to file your your uh, informational return uh, three years consecutive three years you you don't file it you will lose your exemption status and uh, revocation of the uh, organization tax exempt status will happen on the filing due date of the third consecutive miss year so basically if you fail to file 2000 2016 2017 2000 uh, uh, on uh, on on may 15 2018 you will lose your status or if you fail to file 2017 2018 and then may 15 2019 you will lose your status and you'll have to start all over to again to uh, re-establish your 501c3 uh, exemption status okay information needed when filing form uh, 990 of course like for any for any process there are some uh, information needed if you are filing when you are filing your your uh, your 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 uh, article of incorporation with the Department of State there are certain information you have to put together in order to 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 complete the process just like if you are filing your uh, federal income tax you know you have to have your w2s you have to know you have all your financial data you have accumulated to at the year or if you are self employed you have to have your 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 accounting information to give to your tax uh, professional or your accountant to prepare your taxes for you so when you are filing your form 990 and you have to have some information available to make it easy to make the process uh, stressless uh, uh, for you so from 990 and it's easy to to complete uh, you'll need only eight items of basic information about your organization right and then you once you're ready to file after you have re, uh, read the information that uh, they provide you on the postcard on the page once you once you log in on the website you follow through the all the information basically um, the um, the uh, process include you have to have um, these are below is a list of the information needed to complete the form uh, form 990N. Uh, number one is that you have to remember your employer identification number, also known as a taxpayer identification number 10 TIN. Uh, the EIN employer identification number is a, a nine digit uh, is a nine uh, nine digit number. Uh, you have the first uh, you you have the first few numbers basically two numbers and then with the dash and then you have the next uh, few numbers basically and then you have to remember the tax year that you are filing if you are filing in 2017 or 2016 or 2018 uh, or also and then remember you have to remember the legal name the legal name and mailing address the legal legal name and mailing address uh, or, uh, the legal name and mailing address. Oh, so if you have changed your mailing address or your your, uh, you have to ensure that this information is accurate when you file your your informational return. Any other name the organization uses, like a DBA doing business as or the name known to the public, so, uh, you have to ensure that a uh, name is also applica uh, uh, um, um, attached or entered in your in the system. Um, name, uh, name and address of principal officers like point of contact or primary contact for the organization in case the internal revenue uh, service officers or any employee of the IRS have question regarding your return, uh, they can easily uh, reach someone to talk or get their question answered so they don't, uh, your, your processing your return is, is not being delayed. 
And then uh, if you have website address, if your organization has a website, if um, that information will be also necessary in case of the uh, Internal Revenue Service employees need to, uh, that is processing your return uh, need to look for more information about your organization. So and uh, also you need a confirmation that the organization is annual gross receipt are normally fifty thousand dollars or less. So basically, this is where your financial statement. But the thing that I want, uh, um, I want. Uh, especially our church people to understand even though that we are running the business of the kingdom you know this is also business as far as uh, tax concern you have to run it just like you are running uh, any other organizations any other profit business because you have responsibility there are financial responsibility there are tax obligations even though you don't have to be you you are exempt from paying taxes there are obligations to in order to keep your exemption status okay uh, number eight uh, if applicable a statement that the organization has terminated or is terminating going out of business if the if your organization is going out of business for the year you have to file a final return otherwise you're still under that obligation annually to submit and uh, an, an information return so if your organization has been terminated or going out of business you have to ensure that you speak uh, you notify the internal revenue service by filing a uh, final return um, last but not least about uh, filing form 990N is organizations that are not permitted uh, to file on uh, form 990 include uh, include basically um, um, uh, okay basically include so before that um, the f uh, basically the organizations that are not Eligible to file form 990 include 990 and I'm sorry include uh, this type of organizations section uh, 501c1 which are U.S. government instrument instrumentalities uh, section 501c20 group legal services plan section 501c23 pre 1980 armed forces organizations section 501c24 ARISA sec uh, section uh, 40, 49 trust and section 501D religious and apostolic uh, organization section 529 qualified tuition program section 40, 49, 47, A2 split interest trust a section 49, 47A1 charitable trust treated as private foundations. So this complete today our presentations about nonprofit organization form 990N. Next um, broadcast I will uh, cover with you, go uh, through the process of registration with you and how you um, actually complete form 990 and and I hope that information was um, uh, uh, I hope that information was very, very vital or very informative for you if you if that was I um, I, I would be I would be delighted um, if you click like like this video or uh, any uh, notify me let me know that you appreciate the information so the next time I will go um, I will go over the step necessary to register so that you can file your um, information return with the internal revenue when necessary and if you have any questions you need help you can feel free to reach out to me okay hopefully this was helpful thank you bye bye see you next time